NFL offseason officially underway with the 2024 NFL Combine coming to a close this weekend out in Indianapolis. Saturday, a chance to see the top skill position prospects try to improve their draft stock. Some guys turning heads, others maybe need some work at their pro days later this spring. But who stood out to our CBS Sports draft experts? So as we wrap up our coverage out in Indy, we welcome back our draft insider Ryan Wilson and former NFL GM Rick Spielman, who have been holding it down all week long in Indy. Guys, we are at the finish line at this point. So you're going to give us some thoughts on your best performances and the not so great performances from over at Lucas Oil. So let's get started with the running back. Rick, who did you love on the field today out of that group? Yeah, the guy that really stuck out to me the most was Trey Benson, the running back from Florida State. Uh, he was six foot, almost 220 pounds, and ran 439. He was very explosive on his vertical jumps. This kid just intrigues me because he was a transfer from Oregon. He blew his knee out, maybe the worst knee injury I've seen since Teddy Bridgewater, and he comes back and runs a 439 and has a great season for the Florida State Seminoles. So this kid has overcome a lot. You see the speed in the open field, and that showed up today when he ran the 40-yard dash. So the medical's cleared there, Rick. Are you at all concerned about that if you're going to take him, let's say, in the second round? Not after I see what he did here and what he did on tape. Yeah, no, he went absolutely bonkers today, and obviously that, that – Book ended a great season. For me, I'm going to go with Ray Davis out of Kentucky, and he ran for over 1,000 yards there. He ran for over 1,000 yards at Vanderbilt. He ran a 4-5-2, and that is plenty fast. I think he plays faster than that. He can make guys miss in the hole, and obviously he's going to make guys miss in space and then outrun them to the end zone. He was a spark plug for that offense at Kentucky. Uh, had the great season, had the great senior bowl, and then followed it up uh, with the, the great performance here in Indianapolis. And also a fantastic story, Rick. He, he lived in a foster home, and he overcame so much just to get to this point. And uh, you appreciate young men having having uh, an opportunity to, to show themselves after overcoming some uh, some serious circumstances. When you're talking to guys like that in the interview process, I would imagine there's very few things you think they can't overcome when they've had to overcome so much already. Yeah, no, it's an incredible story about him sacrificing, him staying in a homeless shelter so his brother and sister can get to a foster care system and get in a foster home. So this kid has sacrificed all his life. And when you hear stories like that, and that kid overcoming everything he had to overcome, it's just a phenomenal story. And that's why when you draft a guy like this, you don't bet against him. Yeah, I remember, too, uh, he had that standout performance against Florida earlier this year where he had 280 yards and three touchdowns along with a nine-yard receiving score as well. So he's definitely going to be a problem at the next level. Now, on the other side of the coin, guys, for some of the guys, it wasn't their best day. So, Ryan, who's a player who you thought just didn't have the juice during the running back drills on Saturday? And, Rick, this is one of the toughest kids in college football. Dylan Johnson, the, the running back out of Washington, he ran a 4.68 today. He plays faster than that. And remember the toughness he showed in the championship game against Michigan where he was banged up in that game and they leaned on him and he tried to do the best he could. He wasn't even close to 100%. But when he is 100%, he's an absolute bulldog. And you can see him move to pile here. I'll just ask you this. Does the 4.68? move the needle in terms of where you had him or is he still going to be a day three guy like you thought before we came into end? No, he'll still be a day three guy. He may go down on day three just because of the 40 time and it's a skill position uh, but he'll get an opportunity to maybe improve that once he gets to uh, Washington's pro day. What do you think? Who do you have for your uh, guy that you like to steal more from? Oh my god. My guy was worse than your guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Audrey, uh Estime, the running back out of uh, Notre Dame, he ran 4.71 today. Now, he's a big, thick back. And if you watched him in the last game of the season against Stanford, he had four touchdown runs, over 230 yards rushing. Uh, he's what I call a singles double hitter. I thought he got run down in the open field once he got in space. But he's a type of guy that you have to give the ball, and he's going to wear down defenses. And if he gets the ball 15, 20 times a game when he gets to the NFL, that's when he becomes more productive than just giving it two or three times. So I know he didn't run fast, but he is a really good running back. This may knock him down some draft boards 
but a very good football player, but one of those workhorse type backs, whether the, instead of those electric guys that come off uh, the bench on the sideline, from the sideline. Yeah, the good news is, is pro day is still happening later this spring, so they will have a chance to make up for it. I do want to mention uh, one other guy before we move on, Cody Schrader out of Missouri, a really great underdog story. Ryan, you were talking about stories. He did pick up a hamstring injury while running the 40, so a tough break for a kid with a lot of potential. We'll keep an eye on that, especially with how the running back market is changing in the NFL. Let's dive into the wide receiver group, gentlemen. This is a stacked group of receivers from teams to choose from, but we're putting a spotlight on one. Rick, I'm emphasizing one player each for you guys. Uh, now, typically the most talked about drill I here. got my list of 10. We have like yeah, we got two hours, right? Because I have a list of 10 guys I kind of want to read my reports on. What's that? My producer is saying we could only do one. We could only do one, Rick. Follow directions. <laughs> um, but no, on a more serious uh, note. Hey. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, and they're in the process of doing their drills and catching right now, uh, and the quarterbacks are throwing. But uh, Xavier Leggett, the receiver from South Carolina, who I was really impressed with during the season, he was a vertical threat. He's 221 pounds and ran a 4.39. Was explosive in all the vertical jumps. This kid's going to be a playmaker at the next level. Some question at 221, could he run that fast? And he proved that today. So his draft draft stock is going ahead and going up. And I try to go back and look at Debo Samuel, about the same size, but Debo ran a 4.48. If this kid can have the same success that Debo Samuel had, he's going to have a great NFL career. Hey, Haley, fun fact. Guess who threw Xavier Leggett the football? Some guy named Spencer Rattler. Just putting that out there for you, Rick. So thank, shout out to Spencer. How can he be a winner? He hasn't done anything yet. He's in the second group tonight. He's a winner in the Ryan Wilson Hall of Fame. As, my, as for my guy, Rick. I'm going with Adonai Mitchell, a similar type player in that he's a deep downfield threat, but what I loved about Adonai Mitchell out of Texas was his ability to run the short and intermediate routes. And when we talked about him in the fall, we were amazed at how much wiggle he had for someone that size. Now he came out, I think his vertical was 39 and a half inches, which is a little higher than mine and yours combined. Then he ran a 4.35, and I had to double check that, is in fact a 4 period 3-5, and that is absolutely motoring, and that's motoring on a team that also had Jatavian Sanders, the tight end, and Xavier Worthy. We haven't seen him run yet, but that could be a similar time for him. But I feel like, and I want to hear what you think about this, Adonai Mitchell's in the first round. Does Xavier Leggett sneak into the first round now? No, I think he's still going to be in the top of the second, but I can see Adonai Mitchell uh, sneaking into the first with the way he ran today. And you have to remember, he's a little bit of a one-year wonder. He transferred yep. in from Georgia. This was a big year. Didn't have much of an impact on that Georgia roster. But this year uh, broke out when he transferred to Texas. And last year you mentioned Jalen Hyatt, who we talked to on the stage as a one-year wonder at Tennessee. Well, there was some first-round buzz around this time, ended up going in round three. Is he a better prospect coming out than Jalen yes, Hyatt? Yes, just because of the size. And I know Jalen Hyatt was fast. Yeah. This kid's big and fast. And fa Yeah, faster. I believe you're in a 4-4 last year. Jalen Hyatt did. Haley. I wonder if he was wearing Skechers like Rick Spielman is. That may have helped his <laughs> performance a little bit. Where Rick showing off the drift there. He's making your shoes look bad, Ryan. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's keep it rolling here. We're going to continue to talk about the wide receivers, uh, specifically a gentleman that did not talk in Indianapolis. That is Marvin Harrison Jr. He also did not work out today. He says he doesn't plan on working out at his pro day because the resume speaks for himself. Now, Rick, we had an opportunity to speak about this earlier in the week, and you had some opinions on Harrison's decision to not speak or to work out. So now that you've seen some of these other guys go out and put on good performances, how are you feeling about Harrison going forward? I, I just in general, some of these kids that don't work out here, and I may be old school, but you get paid to come here. It's your you're on a job interview, and some of these guys, in my opinion, I think the agents are trying to take over this event. Whether I'm right or wrong, that's my opinion. And the players listen to the agents. Marvin Harrison Jr., no question that he's a top receiver coming out. He's done everything you need to see on tape. He did work out last spring at the Pro Day. Yeah. Uh, but I still think guys that are not doing their physicals or guys that are not participating, are they putting their self ahead of the team? And what happens when they do end up on a roster? Do you still see this selfish attitude that you're seeing at the Combine uh, when they become a part of an NFL organization? I know Marvin Harrison Jr. is a great kid. I spent some time in the fall with him, but a lot of times these kids are taking advice from people that aren't giving them. 
the best advice. All right, Rick, I'll ask you again one last time before we pack up here. If you're the Arizona Cardinals at four, are you taking Marvin Harrison Jr.? He's an exception to the rule. <laughs> there you go, Haley. Uh, Rick, I want to follow up just really quick here just so that viewers at home can understand, too. When it comes to guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. who do go to the combine, they don't speak, they don't work out, what is the benefit of them then being there in Indianapolis? Well, you'd hope they'd participate in the physicals, and I don't know if he did the physicals or not. I know he did weigh and get measured. I know he did interviews with teams at night. So that's a critical part of this process as well for these players to go to these individual formal work, uh, interviews, as they like to say. They get an opportunity to visit with the teams. The teams get to know them as people. I just don't like, and I understand sometimes if you're hurt, you can't participate in everything. But the reason this combine was put together was so all 32 teams can get together. They can all get the medicals on these kids. And the one thing that really you have to think about, what if three or four years from now, one of these kids end up getting traded or he becomes a free agent? We always referred back to the medicals medical that we had at the combine and then when we bring him in on physicals just to update that so you get a baseline on all these kids that's why the combine was created and when they start not participating in the most important parts of this combine then I think it's just absolutely wrong. All right, some other guys who didn't compete include those top three prospects in the class. They also happen to be quarterbacks. Of course, we're talking about Caleb Williams, Heisman Trophy winner Jaden Daniels, and Drake May. So let's talk about what's next for these guys. Rick, as our resident GM, what do you need to see out of them, if anything, ahead of the draft coming up to make up for them not working out at Lucas Oil today? Yeah, well, everybody will go to their pro days, and I know these are the top three, so um, they'll probably throw at their pro days. It'll be interesting. I heard Jaden Daniels. I don't know that for a fact, but heard he didn't even weigh and measure while he oh, was okay. here. So to me, it's always, what are you trying to hide? If you weigh 180 pounds, you're 180 pounds. If you run a 4.6 here or at your pro day, what's the difference? Guys aren't going to get faster at their pro day, but people do want to see these guys throw. That's what they're going to get paid to do for a living. And you tell me you can't come to the combine and just participate and throw. But again, I don't think it's always the kids sometime their business uh, associates, I'll just put, are advising them not to do that. And they're, in my opinion, again, I may be wrong. I think they're trying to take over this event instead of having teams. This is a team event, a football event, and that's what it should be when these kids come. And you know what, a year ago, Rick, we were at the Ohio State Pro Day, and this is slightly different in that Dewan Jones, the enormous right tackle, refused to get weighed. And immediately people thought he weighed over 400 pounds, and that probably had some effect on his draft stock, ended up going in the fourth round. If everyone knew that he weighed 375, maybe gets drafted earlier, makes more money. Now, Jay Daniels is going to fall to the third round, but instead of maybe going two or three, he goes five or six, simply because we don't know everything we need to know about him. Right, and the biggest thing on him was... What's his weight? Because right. everybody thinks he is too thin right now or needs to add some bulk. So step on the scale. Let us see what you are. We'll figure it out as you go. It's not going to affect your draft stock. Just do what you're asked to do. Haley, it's like Ryan, for example. Okay, he's going on a job interview, and they ask him to go in front of the camera and read one of his college reports to evaluate a player and he says well I'll come in and talk to the bosses but I'm not going to do anything on camera and I'm not going to read your reports is that right or wrong I think it's wrong I was just getting ready to say how I was so proud of you guys for getting through this segment without going back and forth at each other and there is Rick Spielman throwing his jabs at Ryan Wilson <laughs> Guys, you are I am awesome. just using an example. He just happens to be next to me. An example. We love to see it. Rick Spielman and Ryan Wilson have been holding it down all week long in Indianapolis, keeping us updated with that combine. Gentlemen, we appreciate it as always. A reminder, you can catch more of Rick and Ryan on their podcast with the first pick. It's been popping all week long as they keep you informed with these prospects as we get closer to the NFL draft. You can scan that QR code on your screen or listen in wherever you get your podcasts.